Hello, I am Martin René Anderson, and this is a simple tutorial on how to create a environment map, like a sphere map, <coughs> which you can use for 3D. What I have right here is the Windows XP wallpaper in normal HD size. And the first thing you want to do in order to get this is make sure you will have a picture or the end result will be a 2 to 1 height. Keep that in mind. But um, before that, depending on what kind of image you have, you might have a panorama already. And this is definitely not a panorama or like a 360 degrees all around view. So I'll make that first. And there's a few different ways you could do this. But I would say the a good trick worth you doing this is going up here in folder over and find offset. Go on and yeah. And you can then change the horizontal offset here in pixels. And this is a good thing in order to check if this seems seamless all the way around. And you can here clearly see we have a very clear edge going right through. You could even just try to make up for this patching it, but it would be a lot of work. So instead, I will do a bit of a cheaty trick. I'll simply duplicate this. I'm very sorry, but while recording, it is horribly slow to come up with Windows for some reason. And I will then flip this new one by simply Control T, and then right-click, flip horizontal. We will now apply this. We'll now have the exact same here. So we will simply smush this together. It gets a bit stretched, but i say you can do this however you like, I'm just showing you the method for this. And align these. And merge. And first off, right off the bat, you can see we have an edge here. I have a slightly opacity. Which is because I wasn't that. Because we're stretching it in and out in uneven pixels. But we can fix that easily. Going to the spot healing brush tool. And just make sure it's on content aware here up at the top. Use this a bit smaller. What I want to do is simply make a selection. You can make this straight edge by simply holding shift and moving the mouse. And release. And it should be fixed. So you might have some more major work you want to redo, like fixing up this cloud so it doesn't look like a cat face or whatever you like. But then we can go back into this other offset and move it around. And you can see that the side edges are doing the exact same thing. So I'm going to set it to something I remember, plus 500. And I'm going to repeat the same step again. When it's done. <laughs> Apparently it doesn't want to do that. But do I have a stuck window now? So, simply again, click, hold shift, mark this, and it should be gone. I can then go back to filter, put the other offset, and we do the opposite, minus 500. And we're back here. So what we have now is simply a seamless image, in the horizontal direction that is. So also if you, for whatever reason, just creating a side scrolling game or whatever you can use this as well it's a bit cheap way because you will see a lot of repetition doing this just flipping it but it's the fastest way to get this done but also if you have too much lighting and shadows in it it will screw this up a bit because on this image it now looks like we have light coming from both directions but we will ignore that here <laughs> so i will now make a copy of this we want to keep it original Yes, and gosh, this is slow. We can keep this original. 
and what we want to do is go back up to filler. Well, hold on, let's do something first before we forget. Image size, and let's make this the 2 to 1 ratio. So we have, uh, which let's make that 900. And then this must be. Gosh, I'm bad at math. This should be 2 to 1. Just make sure that the width is to double the height. <coughs> Once again, when scaling, it's easier to make something smaller than bigger. So you will lose some details if you make things larger. Just keep that in mind. And this should still make the two layers identical. It will apply everything on them. I'll go to Folder, Distort, and Polar Coordinates. This was essentially change between rectangular and to polar. Well, let's simply do this right ahead. Rectangular to polar. And what you see, uh, we do still have an edge here, but never mind that. <coughs> is that like the whole top edge of the image is now one point. Let's try to collect everything into a circle. And what you should be able to see here is that the center of this looks awful. We don't like that. So we'll try to fix that up. So I'm picking the elliptical mark you tool. I have a bit of a feather on. And we will simply pick something that we can put in to fix it a bit. So let's say this cloud here could fit in. Copy. Back up to this layer, paste, and paste it in the middle just to fix things up. That looks better. You can raise a bit to fix the color. And then we can merge these two layers. You can simply be on the top layer and press Ctrl E. And this will merge the layer on with the one right beneath it. And now we can go up here and back into the polar coordinates. But this time for polar to rectangular. This will pretty much like try to undo. We'll try to put it back into rectangular. These boxes. <laughs> and you should now be able to see here that the top has changed. Before we have all these details which are simply lost as we make the whole top edge into a single point. So by doing this we have now ensured it will look a bit better when we put this into our 3D program. So we want to do the same thing with the button. And to do this it's really simple. Control T and then we will rotate the whole thing 180 degrees and we will go back into the store polar coordinate and do the whole thing again um, the image I have right here is pretty simple in regards of how the top and the bottom look like your image might be a bit more advanced than this here it's pretty easy for me to just copy paste something in so it might take Bit more work than this. Gosh, it's slow. Rectangular to polar. Click. And we will go back into the original layer and just collect some grass that should be look directly down. Paste this in. Put it right here. Looks fine to me. Go into more details if you like, but really, I don't care that much. Also, in the end, when you put this onto a sphere or whatever you're going to use this with, you won't notice the small mistakes in it. It's, everything will get a bit distorted. So, we will distort this back. And we have to wait time. And polar to rectangular. And uh, we can flip the whole thing again, 180 degrees if you want to. Wow. And I'm not sure how visible this will be depending on the quality on YouTube, but when we switch between these two, let's zoom in a bit. Here on the hill. You can see there's a lot of detail. 
because we've been like distorting this back and forth four times now. That's pretty expensive to do. And we've essentially only changed the top and button. So if you want to get these details back, let's make a copy of this to be safe. Oh god. Okay. We can this is just a safe copy so we don't ruin something. Well let's just start deleting all this to get the details back. Just don't delete the top and button because that is what we changed. And we want to keep that part. Here we go. Like you could try to go into making more details on everything and all that, but I would honestly say that I think this should be fine for a simple project. Let's make an apply. What I do now is something you don't have to do. I just want to sh check the offset again. Actually, I offset everything a bit this way. You can still kind of feel there is the same here, but it's not much now. This is so slow. <laughs> but basically, this is all you have to do in order to create the whole sphere look to it. Where is it? Here. God. Get back. So, the only thing you would then have to do is make this a high definition range photo. There's several other techniques you can use for this. You can do it in Photoshop. Some cheap tricks. Or you can find a third party application to do it. And whatever you use, it should be fine. Because if you're just using this one photo, it's not possible. To create the true high definition range, you need at least three photos. So, I would say you can properly just go out there without a fish lens, take a panoramic photo series, and then use this method to stitch everything. First, stitch everything up together. You will not need the whole flipping for this. Um, Photoshop does a fine trick by. I think it's in here, maybe. Nah. You can probably find that yourself. But. Photoshop has a good way of stitching together panoramic photos. And you can simply use that and then try to get it into this 2 to 1 measure. And then do the polar thing to get the top and bottom to be pretty seamless. You can still feel it almost has this fish island here at the bottom. Because this is supposed to be one point. That is pretty much the. Like, you could probably do it, you need hundreds of pictures without a fish island. So I'd say good luck. Hopefully this will help you somehow with creating your simple fake spheres. <laughs> I believe uh, I didn't forget anything, so good luck. <laughs>